Hallelujah. Let's pray and then we're going to get right into it. Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And I pray now, God, that you would encourage the hearts of your people. Somebody came in here burdened today, God. They need to hear from you. You've already spoken to them through song, God, and I thank you for that. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you will continue to encourage hearts, continue to build people up in here, God. Hallelujah. But now, God, I pray even now, Lord, help me to preach. Lord, not help me, but use me. Christians has been sitting down. <laughs> Lord, it's, I'm asking you to stand up. Lord, give me clarity of thought, concision of speech, and conviction of heart. Lord, that you will be glorified in this moment. Lord, my prayer is that your people will be uplifted by the word of God. That we will be challenged. That we will be more like you when we leave this place. Father, anything that's not like you, I pray you move it even now. Lord, I thank you for grace. I thank you for washing me white as snow. And I pray now, Lord, that you would help me to say publicly what you and I have discussed privately. Father, I pray, bless this time. Bless your hearers, Lord, that they leave change. Hallelujah. And I thank you in advance. Preaching belongs to you. And we love you and we thank you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads like this. We're continuing in our series in the Sermon on the Mount. We're still in the Beatitudes, but we're going to make our way through some stuff. We will, I also would encourage you. I would encourage you. Uh, I, I, this, you know, usually the teacher don't uh, let you do this, but I encourage you to go ahead of me. Read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Read all of it. Read all of it. And there are some core values in there. I, I encourage you to go ahead of Pastor. Go ahead of me. I ain't getting there yet, but I want you to know what I'm talking about before I talk about it. Amen? Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. This is going to be a fun one. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. I am uh, going to go straight, straight to the, right, I'm going to go right to the chase. Uh, the sermon, the uh, title of my sermon is simple. You are a peacemaker. You are a peacemaker. Y'all stay with me because it's going to be it's, it's going to be straight to the point. I told you, fifteen minutes. Don't be clocking me. I see y'all looking at your watch. Looking at your phone. You are a peacemaker. When you look at the state of the world, when you see when you see the, like the shootings in Buffalo, help me hold the spirit. When you see. Uh, uh, racism, when you see all these things in the world, immediately, depending on what news channel you turn to, immediately a news anchor or somebody, they're going to get a correspondent, and the correspondent is going to tell you that this shouldn't have happened, as we all know, but then they're going to say, this is what we need to do. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need God. We need to, we need to reform the gun laws. We need to uh, give people sensitivity training. We need to do all of these things. And I'm not here to argue whether we need to do those things or not. I'm simply here to argue that those things will not bring peace. I'm, I'm simply going to cut to the chase that, uh, that the, the only way that we can have peace is from the peace giver, Jesus Christ. The only way that the world, uh, this is really my sermon says, if you miss this, you're going to miss the whole sermon, because here it is. The only way that the world can have peace is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Point blank, period. I don't have to go any further. And the text is simply saying here, watch this, that if we are to be, remember, we are in the Beatitudes, we are want to be citizens of the kingdom. If we are citizens of the kingdom, then that means that I am going to, in some way, shape, or form, have this characteristic of peacemaking. You're going to be a peacemaker. If we are going to be children of God, or rather, if we claim to be children of God, if Jesus Christ is your Savior, that means you are a child of God. I'm going to get to that in a minute. We must, watch this, I'm, and I'm getting right into it. We must love peace, we must pursue peace at all costs, and make peace. We must love peace, 
Pursue peace at all costs and make peace. Now, I'm about to get on some of y'all because many of us, uh, and, and uh, put on your steel toe boots, I don't mean no harm, but, but, but many of us are thinking, oh, peace, you mean like, you mean like globally, like, you know, kumbaya, hold hands all over the world. No, 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 uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But this text is very general, and scholars say that it's general because it means to the biggest of wars all the way to the smallest conversations. See, if, 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 if we are Christians, we ought to love making peace. Yeah. Mm -mm. That means that in every situation, you ought to be breaking, making peace. That means that to some extent, you ought to be able to intercede in the midst of arguing and make peace. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and not only that, but you should have peace. In your life. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because many of us, you know, we on this. Every, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. But we on a mental health kick. And we're like, nah, if it's going to mess up my peace, then I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. God is saying that's great. That's added to. But it's more than just your peace. Everybody else's peace. Believers should 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 be about peace. When well, Let me put it to you this way. When people talk about you, do they say that you are a peaceful person? Take inventory. I can't help you. I don't know the answer to that. Don't raise your hand. Uh, if, 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 when, when you walk into the room, do people, do, do people look at you and they say, man, he's going to bring peace to this situation. But let's look at the other side because that's what we really are afraid of. See, it's not, not so much that not only do we love peace, but we should be away from drama. See, the believers shouldn't have a trail of drama with them wherever they go. Y'all going to make me preach hard on this hot day. That's all right. I'm going to go for it. And, and everywhere you go, should nobody, everywhere you go, somebody should have a story about you. Yeah. Let, 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 let me be clear. I'm not saying that believers will never have drama. No, sometimes you got family members that are just crazy. Everybody got a family member that's crazy. I don't care who you are. Everybody got one uncle, one cousin, one sibling that's just crazy. It's just the way it is. God is good and God loves all of them. But we all got crazy family members. I'm not saying about that, but what I am saying is everywhere you go, you shouldn't be the source of drama. Y'all yeah, right. gonna make me, and, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with drama TV, but 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 and you shouldn't be starting stuff up all the time. Yeah. Every time, every, uh, now I'm gonna come down your road. Every time you on Facebook, you posting something, and then you have the nerve to say, I just want to bring awareness to this. No, you don't. You're trying to start something. I'm in trouble now because now I'm in your social media. I'm in your Facebook. I'm in your TikTok. I'm in your Instagram. The problem, we want, I just want to bring awareness to this. No, you don't. You want somebody to argue about it. Can I, can I talk to some of us? I knew I, knew I was going to get in trouble, Pastor Roy. Get the keys. We got to go. I, and, but can, I tell, can I help you all with some of this? You want to make peace? Here's one thing that you need to do. There's this art that this is real, a, a, a timeless art that has happened for centuries. People have mastered it in many different ways. And it's a technique that I believe is biblical. We need to take it for ourselves. It's called the art of minding your own business. Mind your own business. Pastor, that's not biblical. 1 Thessalonians 4.11 says, And aspire to live a quiet life and to mind your own affairs. The NIV says, mind your own business. Sometimes you need to be off of Facebook and say, I don't know, I don't care, I, that's not going to, that's going to be drama if I get involved. I'm not going to like that because somebody going to see that I like that and it's going to cause some drama. My point is this, as peacemakers, we shouldn't be looking for drama, shouldn't be around drama, shouldn't even like drama. Unless I'm watching a TV show, I shouldn't be liking this. You ask me, we live in a world where, where everybody loves drama. Uh, all over the news, uh, and not that not that I care, but it's in your face because it's on the news. But Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, acting named Johnny Depp and his wife Amber Heard, have been going at it all week long in court. And my number one question is, why should I care? Right. However, it's but the point is, it's on the news, and everybody's watching it. Watch this because we want to see the drama of two people's lives. Hear me, and if we are peacemakers, this is going to challenge us. If we're peacemakers, we shouldn't be enjoying this. Oh, man, y'all going to make me work today. We shouldn't be enjoying it. 
Listen. <laughs> now, see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a level with you because I'm on the same plate. I'm, a, I'm, I'm with you. Listen, it's cutting me as I'm cutting you. When Will Smith cut, slapped Chris Rock, we wanted to know all the drama behind it. Where did it come from? Why did Will act like this? And I got convicted. I said I shouldn't want to look at this because if I'm a child of God, I want to be a peacemaker. I'm not making peace by getting involved in what's going on in somebody else's life. Unless I'm getting involved to make peace, if it causes drama, we need to back up. This is, this is one of those sermons. It, it comes right down to the culture. Cuts them right. We shouldn't be so involved in these things. Now, Pastor, why are we peacemakers? I kind of have to go with the text backwards. Because what does the text say? Blessed are the peacemakers for you, for they shall be called what? Sons of God. Sons not meaning just boys, but sons meaning uh, the, uh, the original word actually means children of God. Watch me. Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount is telling the Jews that were listening, if you are going to be a citizen of the kingdom... You're going to have the characteristic of peacemaking and the people will see that you are a child of God by the way you make peace. Well, it's essentially the same for us. I said this already. If you have confessed Jesus to be your savior for the remission of your sins by the, by the profession of your faith, you are a citizen of the kingdom. Congratulations. That's to our baptismal candidates. That's to everybody that said Jesus is Lord in my life. That's me. You know what that means? That means in the text it says you are what? Called. God called you. When he presented the gospel to you, something grabs your heart. You said, I receive Jesus as my Savior. And because you have accepted that invitation, your sins are forgiven. You have the gift of salvation. You are adopted into Jesus' family. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, which means you are a child of God. And if you are a child of God, you are to carry this characteristic of peacemaking. Pastor, why am I a child? Why, why am I? Why should I be a peacemaker? Because you're a child of God. You should be acting like your father. When I was a kid, I didn't get in a lot of trouble. I mean, I feel like not, not a lot. Don't say anything, Mom. I got some. You got something. And every now and again, the teacher would call. I had a really bad class, like like oh, like middle school class. It was so bad that they had to change the rules in the school for him, for my brother. So he had to deal with a lot of things that me and my class did. It wasn't me. It was the entire class. But obviously, that didn't get over with my mom. So every now and again, the, class, the teacher would call all the kids, all the kids, my parents, because of the whole class. And then they would come down to me and my mom say, why did the teacher have to call you me? And I said, mom, you know, it wasn't just me, it was the whole class. And my mom would say, and I know this verbatim, and she only had to say it once because you, she only had to say it once. She said, I didn't raise the whole class. I raised you. And I said, but the whole class did it. She said, I didn't raise them. I don't put food in their belly. I raised you. And you are supposed to act differently because of how I raised you. The whole class is going to act how they act. But when the teacher called me about you, I got a problem. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. If you are a child of God, if God calls you out of darkness into light, if he calls you out of sin into righteousness, if he calls you out from, uh, uh, calls you out of death into life, you are a child of God. And a child of God is not supposed to act like the world. I'm a child of God. The world loves destruction. The world loves arguing. The Lord, world loves canceling people. The world loves drama. As a child of God, you have to act differently. Yes. Why? I belong to Jesus. I'm a peacemaker. And if I'm a child of God, I'm not supposed to be getting involved in any of that. This is going to challenge us today. This is going to challenge us. I, 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 I'm not supposed to get involved with that. Why? I'm a child of God. And if you are a child of God, God said, I raised you better than that. You know better than that. Why? You belong to me. The world is the world. I called you out of that. Are y'all hearing me? I'm moving on. Now, here it is. Here's the, here's, the, here's the hard part now. We understand we have to love peace because we are children of God. Simple as that. But how do we make peace? Make peace. Before we can understand how to make peace, let's talk about where peace needs to happen. Now, I already said this, the text in general, when it says peacemaking, it means 
on the largest scale, like literally talking about uh, uh, making peace in the, uh, like for example, the war in Ukraine between war and Russia, making peace, or or even the smallest conversation. Now, some of us would be like, Pastor, how in the world are we supposed to, you want me to go over and, and just talk to Putin right now and say, hey man, I got a proposition for you. That's not going to work. Pastor, what are you advocating? Hear me. I believe, and, and, and stay with me, because I got a long way to go, but, and, and I need you, I'm going to hit points, but I need you to stay with me while I get there. Ride this train with me. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. I believe the Bible shows us that God tasks the believer with peacemaking because only the believer has the ability to give the world true peace. True peace. What? Notice the text says peacemaking and not peacekeeping. Peacekeeping means you already have peace, and I want it to continue. I want there to continue to be peace. Peacemaking means I'm making peace. Meaning, I would argue, I would contend that maybe the peace we are seeing in the world is not really a peace. It's just a peace treaty until somebody compromises on their contract. We've just decided that we are going to continue to work together. And mind you, peacemaking also, thank you, Holy Spirit, peacemaking also doesn't mean that I compromise the truth in order for there to be peace. Amen, somebody. I don't get I don't work with somebody and I don't I don't I don't say for the sake of peace I'm going to forego what the word of God says. No. But peace means that peace and true peace comes from Jesus Christ. Now, here's my point. Watch this. This word peace, are y'all with me? Stay with me now, because I gotta I gotta move here. Peace in the original Greek, and uh, original, excuse me, uh, 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 original Hebrew language, it actually means whole. To make whole. Not like a whole, but like to make complete, if you will. And so, a peacemaker is someone that, that if you will, that is bringing God's terms of peace to people so that the people will be made whole. Are y'all with me? Now watch me. So, now God is not saying, I want you to go and preach the God. I want you to go all over and because the Christians have the greatest peaceful negotiations. No, 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 no. But, but, but Jesus here is attacking the core issue. Watch me. He's not saying that, listen, the Christians are the only ones that know how to make peace with all the problems. No, the Christians are the only ones that are able to attack the main issue of why people are attacking each other. One word, sin. Sin. The reason why, the, 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 hear me, the problem is not the fact that we can't agree on terms. The problem is not the fact that we can't uh, come to some bipartisan agreement. That's not the issue. The core issue is sin. Racism is a huge issue, but that isn't the core issue. The rich getting richer and the poor getting poor is an issue, but that isn't the main issue. Listen, you can fix laws, but laws can't change hearts. Are y'all hearing me? The core issue is sin. The problem cannot be fixed with correct political views. The problem cannot be fixed with sensitivity classes. The problem cannot be fixed with the right people in power. Don't get me wrong. All of those things are needed to a certain extent. extent. But God is calling for Christians to make peace through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the truth of the matter is you just have sin-filled, sick people arguing. Sin is the core issue here. Why? Because you got a whole bunch of people with dirty hearts. Yes. And they're fighting. It's the heart, y'all. It ain't, listen, 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 listen. You can change the laws all you want, but at the end of the day, the people are still going to have sin in their hearts. You can make this true, you can make this a lie, you can make this okay, you can put you can put in this law, take away that law, you can say this is how we're supposed to live in the law of the land, but at the end of the day, how do you change the heart? How do you change the heart? And the only way that you can change the sin-filled heart is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only person that can make people whole. Are y'all hearing me in here? Stay with me. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. That, that AC is starting to kick in. Amen. I need it right now. We, 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 we shouldn't get caught up. Now watch me. Here's my point. Here's my point. Here's my point. And so the Christian has the, the responsibility to go and to spread the gospel to all nations. So someone say, well, Pastor, how do we make peace in other countries? Preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
This is why we have missionaries go out to other places. Because the point is, we're not trying to change legislation. We're not trying to make a change political rule. We're trying to change the real problem, the heart. Are y'all hearing me in here? We need a heart change. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I told you, I'm almost done. 15 minutes. I'm, I'm over my time a little bit. But here it is. So how does peace happen? Are you ready for this? Write this down. Write this down. Tweet this. Put this somewhere so people can see it or maybe you need to write it for yourself. Man cannot make peace with man unless man first makes peace with God. Amen. Write that down. Write that down. Man cannot make peace with man unless man first makes peace with God. One more time for people in the back. Man cannot make peace with man unless man first makes peace with God. Remember, what's the core issue? Sin. And the only way that sin-filled people can come to the terms of peace with sin-filled people is under the terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Watch this. Let me say it this way. Y'all remember, I always use this example, and I pray that it's, it's etched in your mind. Y'all know the example of the cross. You have a cross, the, the cross has two beams. You have the beam that goes uh, 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 vertical, and you have the beam that goes horizontal, horizontal. The beam that goes vertical represents my personal relationship with Christ. The beam that goes uh, uh, horizontal is the beam that represents my, my relationship with people. And the only way that I can have peace with, and let me say it this way, and my, and my relationship with people is dependent upon my relationship with Christ. Are y'all with me? My relationship with people, horizontal, is dependent upon my relationship with Christ, vertical. So nine times out of ten, you can see how people's relationship with Christ is based on how they treat uh -oh, people. Maybe we need to linger there just for t t 20 more seconds. If people are rude to you nine times out of ten, something is wrong here. Mm. Yes. If people, come on, let, let, me, let, me say, let me say it this way. If, if, if people don't know how to treat their neighbor right nine times out of ten, something is wrong. Not yes. nine times, but ten times out of ten, something is wrong here. If I am not able to look at my neighbor and not judge them by the color of their skin, nine, ten times out of ten, eleven times out of ten, it's because something is wrong here. Are y'all hearing me? And so watch me. A person must be reconciled to Jesus. What do you mean by that? Watch me. Remember, sin is the issue. The gospel can clean the heart. The gospel is the only way that they can clean the heart. And so if the gospel is the only way that they can clean the heart, well, remember. Remember what we said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Last week, blessed are the pure in Talk to me. Pure in heart. And what happens if my heart is not pure, then you're going to see it in my actions. And so if my heart ain't pure, then you're going to, no wonder we have a whole bunch of crazy people acting up. Why? The heart ain't right. And so this is why the gospel of Jesus Christ must come in. I know I'm preaching. I'm right about a preach pastor comes in. I'm doing my best. That's why we need to preach the gospel to people. We need to tell them about Jesus. Why? Because the G only Jesus can cleanse the heart. And when they cleanse the heart, then their actions will follow. Yes. Yes. Are y'all? Am I making sense? Yes. Now watch me. Now watch me. Watch me. Here, here's, here's, here's why. And I'm done. Here's why. Watch this. Jesus does two things to the person when they receive them. Jesus humbles them and makes them whole. Yes. We already dealt with the wholeness. We're going to get to that in a minute. But Jesus humbles them. Watch this. Because when I receive Jesus as my Savior, I have no choice but to go through the Beatitudes. Yes. When I realize that Jesus, when I, when I receive Jesus as my Savior, or even before then the Holy Spirit rushes upon me, He first makes me realize I am poor in spirit. Hallelujah. Help me to preach, Lord. I, I'm, I'm poor in spirit, which means, watch me, I am broken, meaning I am helpless in my sin. I have no merit with God. I have no, uh, uh, I have no merit and I am unclean before God. There's nothing about me that, may, that puts me, watch me, there's nothing about me that puts me above somebody else. And so when I become poor in spirit, I look around and I say, wait a minute. We all broken here. I am not better than you. See, nine times out of ten, 
help me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Nine times out of ten, I keep, I've said it like eight times already. Still bear with me. But ten times out of ten, when people are arguing over something, they're arguing over power they think they earn. Something that I have and I want to keep it. I have something and I will not let it go. But what happens is when you are poor in spirit, you begin to realize that the very thing you think you earned was given to you. Yes, sir. Yeah. You begin to realize that nothing in your life belongs to you. Why? Because the meat will inherit the earth. Meaning everything that was given to you was given to you by who? God. And so everybody's put on a level playing field. My grandfather did this. That's very well. But the truth of the matter is God gave your grandfather all that stuff that you have right now. And the truth of the matter is we are all on a level playing field. We're all poor in spirit. We're all broke. And the only way that we realize that is when we receive and understand the gospel. So then, watch this, when I'm poor in spirit, when I humble myself, I begin to treat people right because I understand that I'm no better than anybody else. When we, when we tell people about Jesus, it humbles them. <laughs> humbles them. So can't nobody argue about nothing because we, none of us have anything. That's number one. I'm done. Number two, God makes us what? He makes us whole. Now watch me. I cannot, I'm going to flip it this way and then I'm done. I really am done. I said 15, I went over. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> so watch me. God makes us whole. I argue that not only do we argue because we have power, because we think we have power, but I argue that we fight, watch this, because we, because we, uh, because we think the thing that we are fighting for will make us whole. One more time. The thing that we are fighting for will make us whole. If, 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 if the government says that we can have this, then i got to fight for it. Because that's what's going to make everything all right. Don't get me wrong. There are some things we ought to be fighting for. There are some things we ought to be marching for. There are some things that we ought to be doing. Absolutely. We shouldn't go to either extreme. However, the truth of the matter is none of those things, even though they give all the laws, if Biden does all the laws, pray that he takes away all the school loan debt. But if he does all the laws that he wants us to do, at the end of the day, we're still going to have problems. Because after all, if we, if he, if the next president or the pre current president does all the right things, we're still going to have a problem. We won't be made whole. And nine times out of ten, we are fighting over things because we think that this is the only way that we will be made right. But the only person that can make us right is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So watch me. Watch this. I'm done. Watch me now. Help me, Holy Spirit. So watch this. Which means that when I'm going to people and giving them the gospel, I'm not trying to push my selfish ambition. I don't have anything to push. I'm not trying to push my political side. I'm not really, I'm not trying to push what I think should happen. I'm not trying to push what I want to happen. The reason why I'm, pu I'm pushing the gospel of Jesus Christ is because my agenda is not my agenda, but his agenda. And my agenda is to make you whole through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only way that we can be made whole is through the gospel. And so the truth of the matter is everything changes with us because now we're not on a mission to try and make America right. We're on a mission to try to make the world whole. Woo! I'm preaching. I know I'm right about it. And so what happens is when the gospel gets a hold of me, my agenda changes. I'm not focused on me. I'm not focused on what I want. I'm a peacemaker, which brings us full circle. I'm a peacemaker, meaning that I am trying to bring peace through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I making sense? I'm bringing peace through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, real quick, and I'm done. Bringing peace through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Unity, when I'm coming to people, two things I already said, when I'm coming to people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm not looking that I'm not compromising the gospel in order to make peace. That's not what that is. The word says the word, and if that's not going to work for you, then, then you're not trying to submit to the peace terms, and at this point, it's not so much that I can't bring peace, but you don't want peace. Are y'all with me? That's number one. And then I'm done. Number, number, number two, unity is not uniformity. Hear me. What does that mean? That means, that means um, I don't have to like what you like. 
I like Batman better than Superman. You don't have to like Batman better than Superman. You don't have to do that. I, that's just an example, y'all. Plus, like, what are you talking about? Stay with me. It's an example. Unity over uniformity. We, the differences that the kingdom brings, we don't have to all like the same thing in order for us to be on the same page. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? We can have this, listen, you, we're going to have disagreements, but the one thing that overhauls all the disagreements is the gospel. And so, I'm done. And so what happens is, when we get together and we start disagreeing, we say, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is starting to uh, adhere or hinder our relationship in the gospel of Jesus Christ. This now has become a secondary thing instead of a primary thing because it's disrupting the fellowship. And because it's disrupting my fellowship, we need to shut it down. Why? Because first and foremost, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Am I making sense? Now, I am not saying that you go and you try and fix every situation that's around you. You go to your neighbor, I know how to make peace in this house. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But hear me. But there are people in your life, there are people in your lives, that God has placed in your lives, that God wants you to speak to. God wants you to bring the gospel to that situation. I'm not talking about, don't listen, don't go down to City Hall and say, I'm ready to do, no, 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 no. Right where you are, the classroom, your job, at the, at the home, wherever the case may be, God, God says, give the gospel right there and bring peace to those situations. Make people whole right where you are. You ain't gotta do anything crazy. Make, a, make, make people whole right at your job. At, 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 at Costco's? At Costco's. At Costco. Where do you work? Target, whatever the case may be. Uh, 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 um, uh, Restaurant Depot, whatever the case may be. Wherever y'all work. Make, make peace right there. Your family members, when they bring you something, bring them to the gospel. Bring them to the gospel. Tell them the truth. Walk them through it. They may not accept it now, but keep on walking them through it. Keep on advising them through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And be a peacemaker. Amen? Amen. Stand your feet. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. All right. That wasn't bad. That was 30 minutes. Thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your Savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sin in my life and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life, and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.south. SouthRiverNJ at gmail.com. That's UnionBaptist.SouthRiverNJ at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.